Um, so okay. uh, please. Um, so thank you for first of all to give me the opportunity to present my work here, which I've conducted in the course of my master's th master thesis, which is supervised by Maciej Maliborski and Piotr Kuschel. And to start off, let me give you a brief motivation. Um, so as we already heard in the uh, previous talk, uh, curved space time uh, describes a rotating black hole and is therefore often used to uh, simulate and visualize uh, the shadow of a black hole in the exterior region. So somewhere outside of the uh, horizons. Um, and we want to do something similar, but um, except um, that we want to study null geodesics in the uh, extended curve space time. So not necessarily outside of the horizons. And with this, um, we want to visualize new features. Um, so uh, let me quickly go through a, a few basics of, of curve space time for those of you who are not completely familiar with it. So this is the metric in boyer lindquist coordinates where you have the mass parameter m and the rotation parameter a. And you can uh, see that the metric has problems at sigma and at delta being zero. Um, so this sigma being zero actually corresponds to a singular ring lying in the equatorial plane, which is a curvature singularity. Whereas this delta being zero uh, corresponds to the two horizons. And I um, already want to mention here that uh, there are two asymptotically flat regions of this space time, namely one for positive radii and one for negative radii. And you can travel between those two um, by crossing the, the disk spanned by this ring singularity. So for example, you can start at positive radii, cross the two horizons, and then cross this, this disk. And then you're in a, a completely other uh, space time region where actually you don't have any horizons. Um, because this delta has no, no zeros there. So you can move freely, kind of. And um, then only by crossing this disk once more, you uh, come back to your original region in space time. Two other um, coordinate systems which are um, rather helpful are these um, Eddington-Finkelstein-like coordinates, which are similar to the Schwarzschild case in the sense that um, they, they cancel the singularity at the horizons. And therefore, we will use those um, to solve the geodesic equations of motion. So our geodesics can actually cross the horizons. Um, and furthermore, there are these Kerr-Schild coordinates, which we will use for visualization um, because they have this nice property of this underlying flat space-time metric. Um, right, so to give you a feeling of the uh, global structure of Kerr, um, this is a projection diagram already introduced by Rafaela yesterday. Um, so here you have one asymptotically flat region at um, positive infinity. Then you can go inwards uh, across the outer horizon and the inner horizon. And somewhere in here is this singular ring, uh, which you need to cross to uh, reach this other asymptotically flat region at negative infinity. And here's a good point to um, mention what we want to do. Namely, we want to um, put an observer at negative infinity, so far away from the black hole in this negative region and put the light source somewhere outside the horizon and basically answer the, the question, how would this observer at negative infinity perceive this light source? So the task is to um, find a null geodesic, which starts at the source at somewhere outside of the horizon, crosses both horizons, goes through this disk, and then finally escapes to negative infinity to, to be, um, be able to per, uh, be perceived by the observer. So a uh, quick um, introduction into curve space time, uh, the geodesics. So there are um, four quantities which are preserved along any geodesic, which is this mu squared. Then it's energy, the angular momentum in the azimuthal direction. And this fourth one is uh, the so-called Carter constant. In our case, we want to study null geodesics, which have of course mu squared being zero. And in this case, only these two um, ratios are actually independent. And so we can uh, formulate and express the equations of motion in, in these quantities, in this lambda and this eta, uh, instead of L, Q, and E. And um, I want to mention here that I'm not going to talk about uh, each uh, geodesic equation of motion in, uh, in detail and uh, explain how to solve them, because this is not important for understanding the results I want to show. Um, and it's only basically detail. 
but there is one equation of motion I want to mention in, in more detail, which is the radial equation, because this basically um, determines the, the global uh, uh, behavior of our geodesic. So on the left hand side, you can see this derivative is with respect to tau, uh, which is so-called mean time and which allows us to decouple uh, the equations of motion. And on the right hand side, you can see this new R is only the sign choice of this square root. And the radicand here is the so-called radial potential, which of course needs to be positive. Otherwise you get a complex uh, path, which is not physical. Um, and to analyze this, this potential, you can do the following. Namely, you can specify this A and M and also this eta, and then plot this, this radicand only in this lambda r plane, where you will find the following, that there are these gray regions where the, uh, the radial potential is negative. So these gray regions are the forbidden regions, and the white regions are the allowed regions where all motion must take place. Sorry, uh, could you remind um, what's the meaning of this, the eta and lambda again? Um, so, so basically, these are the, 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 um, the angular momentum of the, of the geodesic as well uh -huh. as this, this fourth constant of motion, the Carter constant. OK, um, so those are those dimensionless thing, quantities. OK. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, but I will, I will relate them later to a more, um, to a more uh, uh, helpful uh, understanding, um, in, in actually, on the next slide. Uh, but uh, just quickly, these, these lambda um, are plots. So, um, Again, the, the motion takes place in the white regions. And this lambda, as it is a constant of motion, stays constant, whereas this r can change. So any geodesic can only move on horizontal lines in these plots. Um, and when hitting one of these forbidden regions, it necessarily need, needs to get reflected. Um, and our scenario is now this, that our observer should be at large negative radii, so somewhere over here. And the source should be somewhere out here. And the task is now to connect those two points by a horizontal line, which is impossible uh, for positive eta and also for eta being zero. But only for uh, negative eta, there is this gap opening up. So um, this is actually called the inner throat, whereas this large uh, gap out here is called the outer throat. And only in this um, parameter region or constant of motion region, um, you're able to, to actually connect the source to the observer. And we could now do the following um, to, to analyze this uh, potential further in this lambda eta space. Uh, but again, um, I mean, this is rather abstract. So for visualization, um, it's often more helpful to define these, these impact parameters, uh, which due to time reasons, I'm not uh, explaining in, in great detail other than um, they, by, by, project, by projecting the angular momentum in, in the, the azimuthal direction as well the angle, as the angular momentum in the uh, polar direction. By projecting these angular momenta on the sky of an observer very far away from the black hole, um, one is able to define a, a kind of a coordinate grid on the sky of this observer when they look directly at the center of symmetry. So this, this is actually a coordinate system on the sky of the observer. Uh, and in this coordinate system, this alpha is the displacement perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, and this beta is the displacement par parallel to it. And um, so uh, you can think of this basically as what an observer would see when looking directly um, at the, at the uh, black hole. And uh, this way, we get rid of these, these uh, uh, abstract uh, constants of motion and relate them to kind of a visualization. And now we can um, actually um, uh, study these, these openings, these throats from the plots before uh, in this new- uh, Tobias, question. Yes? So, so this theta zero is the uh, uh, angle of the source, is it or? or? Uh, 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 no, actually it's the, the polar angle of the observer. Okay, Sorry, thanks. I should have mentioned it. So the, 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 the the drawback with these impact parameters is that we need to specify the, the position of the observer here. Um, but we gain the visualization. So um, we can now de um, uh, discuss these throats in this uh, new, new impact parameters. 
where these are the conditions which define these openings. And in the Schwarzschild case, you only have the outer throat, uh, which, which corresponds to the black hole uh, shadow as seen from the exterior region. For higher rotations, this gets deformed and moves to the right. And uh, also for a, a rotating black hole, you have this inner uh, throat opening up, which are exactly those geodesics which we are interested in because um, those are the ones which can start at the source at positive radii and reach our observer at negative infinity. Um, right. And before showing um, any visualizations, a few words about the solutions to the, uh, to the uh, geodesic equations of motion. So actually last year, uh, Gralla and Luxaska solved the integral equations of motion using elliptic integrals and elliptic functions, but they used uh, Boyer-Lenkwist coordinates because they were only interested in the Kerr exterior, whereas we use uh, Eddington-Finkelstein-like coordinates. And alternatively, we can also numerically solve the equations uh, using the second order uh, equations. But either way, what we get um, is that we need to specify the black holes parameters as well as the uh, the uh, space-time location of our observer and the radial position of the source. And then for each point alpha beta inside this small inner throat, we can calculate the remaining space-time location of the, of the source. And uh, in this talk, uh, we're only basically um, concerned with these angles, psi s and theta s. Um, right, so now to start off the visualizations in the last few minutes, um, this is an individual trajectory, just to give you a feeling how they would look. So we plotted this in Crochet coordinates, and I want to uh, concentrate on this plot on the left, which is the plot on the Zx uh, plane. And you can see the geodesic starts at positive radii, uh, goes inwards, crosses the, the disk, and then uh, finally escapes to negative infinity. And what I want to um, stress here is that uh, the, the upper half plane corresponds to positive radii, whereas the lower half plane corresponds to negative radii. And uh, the fact why we can view it that way is that these geodesics, with, uh, which can cross over from positive to negative radii, so which can go through this disk, um, actually have the further uh, property that they can never cross the equatorial plane somewhere outside of this disk. So they cannot go up here. So by going from the uh, upper to the lower half plane, they necessarily change their radial sign and they cannot, cannot go back up here again. That's why um, these gray curves are the horizons and these are only plotted for uh, positive radii. Um, right, so, but we're not uh, mainly interested in the individual trajectories, but rather what an uh, observer would see. And for this, uh, we can do the following. So we take this inner throat, discretize it and color each point like so. And for each point inside here, we can calculate the starting angles psi s and theta s for a source at positive infinity. So we're basically asking the question, what portion of the sky at positive infinity can our observer at negative infinity see? And to better visualize uh, this, this uh, portion at, uh, of the sky, we can do the following and make one of these polar plots where the distance to the origin is actually this uh, polar angle theta and the angle uh, around the origin is this azimuthal angle psi. And with this, we basically create a projection of the uh, northern hemisphere of the sky at positive infinity down to a 2D surface. Um, and this, this blue circle here uh, corresponds then to the equatorial plane. And what you can see is that um, most of what the observer uh, actually can see up to this blue part out here is confined to a rather small area of the sky. And only by going closer to the, the throat boundary, this fans out and increases in size. And to study this uh, in more detail, uh, we did this short video here. Um, I hope it's smooth. Um, uh, and here we, we uh, considered rings inside this inner throat with a certain distance to the, to the throat boundary and mapped these over to the sky at positive infinity and, and see what portion you can see. And as you will see, this, as, as we approach the throat boundary, these, these curves move around uh, in the azimuthal direction and get deformed and actually fold in on themselves. Um, and, and this, as it turns out, corresponds to multiple images like these, these movements here. Um, 
right and and now as as the last uh, topic basically i want to do uh, i want to show that we can also do the opposite so not color the points here and map them over here but rather paint the sky um and here we did it in the polar direction where the sky around the axis of symmetry is yellow and then by going closer to the uh, equatorial plane it becomes red blue and finally green and so for an observer at positive radii they would perceive red on top of blue um, our observer however uh, gets a flipped image so for him or her the, the blue is on top of red we can play the same game in uh, the azimuthal direction where for the observer at positive radii green is on on the left hand side of, of yellow and uh, for our observer, this is again flipped. So uh, pictures basically get flipped upside down and left to right. Um, and for your amusement, as a last point, uh, because I'm already going over time, um, is that we, we can now fix this uh, RO, so the radial position of the observer and the polar position, and vary this azimuthal angle so that we kind of create a movie uh, for an observer which rotates around the black hole at a certain height. And the result is this little movie where you can see that the portion of the sky the observer can can see kind of moves around in circles and uh, with this i already want to uh, close and leave you with a, a short outlook um what's uh, to come so the the goal the ultimate goal would be to create a visualization of what an actual physical observer would would see uh, and for that we need of course to consider a, a physical light source like a star orbiting a black hole or an accretion disk and uh, for a realistic image we also need to calculate the doppler shift and the intensity change yeah that's okay it. thank you very much uh, so uh, questions um so i I, th um, I found this quite uh, quite interesting and and curious uh um uh, so i mean um when you when you go inside the horizon uh, and uh, then i mean there are all sorts of strange causality or a causality mm -hmm. effects yeah uh, and i mean you have uh, you have you know potentially closed time like curves and so on and so forth so mm -hmm. i'm i'm a little almost puzzled by the that things are not even stranger so to speak I mean, some some um, uh, something uh, like I mean, what what? How does this a causality affect what you're showing? Um. um yeah. Yeah. I, that's, that, that's and, good... and another a related question is: I mean, in some sense, I always thought that you know also that um, in some sense. You have, uh, uh, if you think about Schwarzschild, I mean, you have in 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 the inner, in the sort of, in the other uh, asymptotically flat region, you have sort of time is somehow running. Uh, you know, clocks are going backwards in some sense. Uh, that was my impression. So how does that, uh, how do, does that figure into this? Uh, what you're showing here. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this negative radial region is, is curious for, for a lot of reasons. Um, so you basically would not need to, to flip the radial sign, but you could also flip the, the sign of the mass uh, component. So you could uh, consider it as positive radii, but with a, a negative mass. So mm -hmm. th that's why this, 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 um, this uh, region, uh, so so in this region, the, the black hole is actually repellent, and um, yeah, and but well, but isn't that just a matter of which time direction you're considering, so to speak? Yes, right? yes. So yes. I mean, for someone living in this inner region, isn't uh, I mean, and from a certain point of view, wouldn't uh, the black hole just look exactly like an ordinary curve, or am I misunderstanding that? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say so because you have these these uh, this radial potential would would stay the same regardless of the sign of of this uh, of of the time direction, so uh -huh. to say. 
-hmm. So um, you, this this small inner throat, uh, which would correspond to the the um, the shadow of the black hole in this negative R region, um, stays the same regardless of the time direction. Hmm. So yeah. May I comment here? So Lars, if you look at the right picture, I mean the the so so the the orbits of uh, of photons. Uh, have to be on uh, on horizontal lines. Yeah, yeah. So if you are uh, in the right uh, situation and somewhere up in the uh, in the picture, you have complicated uh, photon orbits which go back and forth because they they hit these uh, gray walls, right? Mm -hmm. But on the left part of the orbit, negative r, you can only have one bounce point, right? So mm -hmm. if you have an orbit which bounces, it bounces once and goes back to minus infinity. So it's going to leave this uh, causality violating region and never come to it again. Mm -hmm. So that's why these uh, geodesics are, are rather simple, right? So we're not looking at all geodesics here. We're only looking at geodesics which come in from infinity. So they really have to fit into this little uh, aperture out there, and they just keep going. Right? They they have no option to to stay uh, caught in this uh, causality violating region. And there is no black hole for negative R, right? So this is. And in that region, there is no black hole. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. there is no. Yeah, the, it's always a naked naked singularity. Yeah. So this is something different, right? Um. So are there further questions? Yeah, I would like to use that toy also. Um, you have this picture where the curves are going through the ring singularity, these yellow curves. Ah, you mean, you, you mean, again? Okay. Yes, yes. this this one? Mm -hmm. On the right hand side, no, no, that was fine. No, 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 the other, the, the, the previous one. Aha, uh -huh, this one. Yeah, that one, yes. So, so the the green curve is before the plane. The the, 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 green curve, the, the green curve corresponds to a positive radius of this uh, uh, yes, geodesic. Curve. Yes, yes. Now the yellow thing circles around several times. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it, I mean depending on the way the green curve comes in. Does it, are the curves which circle more and more and more often, or I mean, it's yes. not clear to me what what's shown here. Um, yeah, may, maybe I should have mentioned it. So um, actually, this is a, a geodesic with impact parameters rather close to the throat boundary, um, uh, which which yes. uh, circle more and more. So so it's it's kind of as in the. In the closer you come, the more often they go around. Yeah? Yes, yes. So th this is this is actually what's then basically shown here, uh, when when approaching this this throat here, uh, this yes. outside, then then these geodesics um, take take way more time to yes. to to reach the the final. Uh, that's, I, I was wondering about this picture too. It's just numerically, it's very difficult to to show more to us than this year. Uh, yes, yes. So, so, but maybe I should have mentioned it that this is close to the throat boundary, and uh, most of the geodesics. So, so uh, most of the field of view kind kind of correspond to boring geodesics, which which do yeah. not much. They, they fall good. through and escape. Yes. Yeah. So I, I tried to uh, put a, uh, an interesting one, and you can oh, see it's very pretty. I, I, I <laughs> criticism. I just want to play with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, maybe what, what one can notice is that it stays rather a long time um, for small negative radii, so just yes. below this, this uh, ring. And this actually um, corresponds to, to uh, coming close to this forbidden region uh, in yes. this plot. So the, the radial motion gets really slow uh, close to the, close to the uh, gray region. And then it escapes to to negative infinity. Okay, yeah, close to critical point, right? Mm -hmm. Of this potential. Yeah. So so. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, may may I comment that these are simulations for people who don't believe in cosmic censorship, right? Because then, <laughs> in this space time, we have a naked singularity, and there actually you can see uh, that this naked singularity spans a circle in the sky, and you can see through the 
through this circle what happens on the other side <laughs> yes but i mean you you can never see mm, you you can never see the 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 singularity in particular because uh the singularity yeah. is in the equatorial plane and and these geodesics uh, can never if they avoid if they, it yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so, so so if they can if yeah. if you're already going into this kind of science fiction area <laughs> so to speak um what happens with these pictures when you make uh, when you go to the over extreme curve? I guess a lot of the considerations have to go through, right? Yes, I mean Except, what? I mean you, you won't have horizons, but uh, you know, in principle, yeah, you still have the ring, right? Yeah, calculations. Yeah. Just for uh, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean that's that's a good question. Uh, I mean the, the the field of view. So this the, this inner throat would increase in size. So the the, the observer at negative radii would um, be able to see more and more of the sky at at positive uh, infinity. Uh, I don't know if this if if the portion of the sky actually increases. So if the observer can see more of the sky or just with a higher resolution. Mm -hmm. But, but okay. you still have two copies of the universe, right? So you still have this throat and you still have two copies and a double covering and everything, right? So it's not like when you, uh, when you are overcharged, you, you, don't, you shouldn't think of this as a single singular ring sitting in you know, space time, but you still have this other exactly. region yes. which, uh, which, which exists. Which will, and this will, if you look at it correctly, this will persist even if you go, if you let the mass go to zero, right? I mean, that's... Uh, Right. Yeah. 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 So, Lars, there are two questions. Tobias has uh, one uh, question. Okay. I'm not sure how to uh, um, how to invite people to talk. Well, you can just say, Rafaela, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you can unmute this one. Uh, yeah, I already unmuted myself. Thanks. Yeah, maybe uh, it was already partially answered before the the question, but but I was wondering. Um, I mean, it's thank you for the very interesting talk. It's 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 uh, it's really super cool. Um, but so um, so my question is, I mean, what so so it, somehow the your the, the 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 setup is somehow quite specific. I mean, do you do you want to to match it to something that that can be observed in experiments or, I mean, since I mean you you pose this very specific question. Mm -hmm. What 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 do you want to to get out of it ultimately? Um, I mean, uh, yeah, this is probably nothing for like uh, uh, as a prediction for an, a real uh, life observation, um, which can be compared then. Uh, but because this this negative region is is kind of problematic from that point of view, as that it it's under the Cauchy horizon. And that you have this naked singularity there, so it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's maybe more of a, a, a game and and uh, trying to to visualize uh, all all features within this this extended curve space time as um, opposed to like uh, uh, trying to trying to uh, be able to to predict some real life observation. But Tobias, I mean, I, I really, uh, I, well, I, I'm really saying this uh, seriously, right? So we don't know whether cosmic censorship is true. And uh, so this is telling you what you would see if there are cosmic, uh, there are singularities, right? Naked singularities, and uh, they would allow you to, sure. to see through, uh, through things. I mean, we, we, we think that general relativity is correct and it predicts unusual behavior. It has managed to predict black holes so far, and they've been verified. And it predicts existence of naked singularity in the form of a ring, uh, which might be forbidden if we believe in cosmic censorship, but which might not. And so that's what you would see if cosmic censorship is wrong. Right, right. We would, we would shoot another movie. <laughs> so. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, it's, it's very beautiful talk. Thank you. Okay. Um.
Uh, so if there are no further questions. Um... Uh, this uh, orange curve, which loops around, can you go yeah. back then? Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, does it loop in this time travel zone? Um, no, uh, this time travel zone would be further uh, below, I think. Yes. Okay, but thank I'm you. Not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe. Uh... Magic, if I remember correctly, the time travel zone is a torus which touches the ring, right? But uh, I think that yeah. this, so depending upon the parameter, it might very well cross the travel zone ring. If you're very close, it might actually hit it, but it's going to leave it just by this uh, uh, argument of, of looking at the, the plots of the forbidden zone. In the potential. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't remember the shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, um, well, so maybe this is a good, uh, good point to close. And um, so thanks again for this very interesting talk. And I'm um, very curious uh, things, but uh, I have to say, even, even the very extreme mass equal to zero case, I think is is actually not uh, not not at all unimportant. It's actually, I believe, it's actually uh, very important. Even that seemingly simple extreme case. Um, um, so uh, so we should thank uh, all the speakers uh, and also all uh, the local organizers uh, for this uh, this technically advanced. Uh, version of of CR, uh, of the CRS thank you very much thomas for all your help yeah it's very smooth thanks yes thank you thanks a lot for the kind words mm.